Welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. If you haven't already had the opportunity, I invite you to go back and check out the previous episodes. If you've checked them out and you like them and you like this episode, I encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. And you are more than welcome to make comments in the space down below. I am extremely honored to be joined today by an exceptional certified nursing assistant who has served our nation's frail, elder, and disabled citizens for over 42 years. Tina has also been a member of the a member of NACA and a member of our board of directors since 2013. It is my distinct privilege to welcome Tina Roberts, certified nursing assistant from the Volunteer State. Welcome, Tina. Thank you. So, Tina, would you mind sharing with our audience um, just a little bit about yourself, how you became a CNA, and why you stay? Um. My mom was a nurse, and uh, she worked at a nursing home, a small facility, and I started working at 15, going after school and staying. I grew up in a nursing home, so I started working, and just stuck with it, and I went to nursing school for a year. I didn't really like it. I wanted the hands-on with my residents. Um, it's the most rewarding job I've ever had. And to me, it's not a job, it's a career. I've, I've chose that as my career. I love my residents. I love being there with them. When I'm not there, I worry about them. Um, I'm 57 years old. I've got four children and 10 grandchildren. Um, they keep me pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, they're my family too, you know. Mm. Um, the residents, they, my kids grew up in the nursing homes. They love them. They're, actually, both of my daughters are CNAs. Um, you know, I hope that my grandkids will be CNA, some of them, <laughs> and follow. Um, I have a sister that's CNA and my other sister's a nurse. Um, pretty much we've got the medical field covered, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, it's like I said, the most rewarding job. You either love it or you don't, but. You know, Tina, years. as I was, I was, as I was listening to you, I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, a couple of things came through to me. First of all, that caring for others is a family business for y'all. Yes. The second thing that came through there is that your residents, the men and women that you serve have become a part of your extended family and you care about them even when you're not with them. And then the third thing that you shared that, that I think, I hope the audience picked up on this is you realize that caring the way that you care is not a J-O-B. It's mm -hmm. not for the paycheck. Mm -hmm. It's because the passion and compassion and, and, sincere love that you have for the people that you care for and i really want to i want to thank you for that thank you you know um one of the things that we talk about here at grassroots advocacy is we really talk about the fact that nursing assistants have the opportunity to be the voice for their residents for their fellow nursing assistants and for their profession now Tina, you have over 42 years of service. Have you seen a difference over those years when it comes to how nursing assistants speak out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, back when I started, you didn't really speak out a lot. You know, <laughs> you were pretty, it, they were pretty strict. Um, and they really didn't have a voice back then, I guess. You know, they, they just did their job and went on. Now they're they're more, you know, like, well, at my facility, they come to me, you know, because they know they can talk to me, you know, and I, if I can't find out what's going on, you know, they won't talk to a nurse, they won't talk to an administrator, they, they come to me and they're like, hey, Tina, this is what's going on, you know, what do I do? Okay, well, calm down a minute and let me figure it out, you know, but yeah, I think they're more outspoken, you know, sometimes maybe a little bit too much, but... Um, they do have a voice, and they do they do advocate for our elderly, and that's what we need. We need 
our younger ones that are coming into this field to advocate for our elderly and, and keep advocating for it until everything that the CNAs want and need, they get. Because if you make us a good CNA, you get better care for your residents. You know, they take great care of your residents. They, they you know, you, you make them happy. And not everybody's happy. I mean, I have my bad days too, you know, but everybody has bad days. You know, you just have to take a step back and calm down and then re regroup, you know. And they pretty much, that's what they do. I mean, that's my advice to the young ones coming in, you know. Don't let the older ones push you out because they do. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, they want to. Don't let them run you, you know. You're going to be taking care of me one day. And when you do, I hope you take care of me like I take care of my resident. Or you would take care of your grandmother or mother or father. That's respect, you know. You have to have it in your heart. And I'm, and deep down I have it in my heart, you know. And as many years as I've been a CNA, no matter if you lose one or not, I don't care how many years it is. That never goes away. You cry, you're upset with the family. You, you, it's, it's a total, you know, you see them come in, you see them go out. It's just the whole experience, you know. They're part of your family. It's like losing someone you love. And it, it's very hard to do. But hang in there, guys, and mm. keep, keep trekking along because you'll get there. You know, Tina, I heard two things in what you just said that I... I'm just like inside, I, I was being quiet because I was listening, <laughs> but inside I had cheerleaders doing flip flops yeah, no. and things like that. <laughs> Two things you said that really resonated with me. Number one is you remind me of that person on the team that everybody can go to because they know you'll say the right thing. Yeah. I mean, if I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll find it out. Right you know? on. So I mean, you're kind of like the mouth of the South. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what they call me at work. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that you said that I really appreciated was you, you said, and I absolutely agree with you, how important it is to really speak up, to speak up for your residents when you feel like they're not being treated in a way that they deserve. To speak up for your profession. When, when the other aides are running the new kids off, don't let that happen. Mm -hmm. Stand up and say, we need these young people because we're going to retire, good Lord willing, <laughs> and we need somebody to take care of us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so I really appreciate that you made those two really great points, you know. One of the things I wanted to ask you about is over your years as a, as a, as a nursing assistant, have you ever seen an example of when a nursing assistant spoke up on behalf of their resident or their their fellow nursing assistants or their profession and, and you've seen that happen and it really worked out well can you tell us about that yeah i mean i can't go into detail but <laughs> she's yeah. trying to be hippified <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> hip all there but yeah it, i mean you know there's times that you do stuff and you think that you're doing wrong and you're not and you know they just they don't understand it and you have to kind of Explain it to them what's going on and how, you know, mm -hmm. why it's like this. Because there's just so many restrictions in nursing homes, it's unbelievable. I also wanted to ask you, um, Tina, um, since you've seen it work out well, I would imagine you've also seen it in, in a situation where it didn't work out well. Yes. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about a situation where it didn't work out well and what you would have done differently to get a better outcome? Well, we had a situation that one of our good aides had been there for five or six years, and she was a very good aide. Um, one of the residents accused her of abuse. Okay. Not physical, you know, um, or anything like that. It was more he wanted to do something, she, and she wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So that's neglect. Mm -hmm. um, but... Instead of, and they fired her for it, okay? In, but I think if it would have been me, I would have probably maybe written, or just gave her a verbal warning, you mm -hmm. know, and, and explained to her, hey, this is, you know, this is why you have to do this because they have rights. Mm -hmm. you, there's certain things you cannot say 
you know, or do mm-hmm. because they have they have rights. You have rights too, but your resident rights comes first, you know, no matter what. And if that's if it's any kind of abuse, they're going to investigate it, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think if it had been me, I would give her a verbal and maybe send her home and let her cool off for, you know, the day and, you know, say, hey, come back tomorrow and, you know, see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, move her to another hall. Do mm-hmm. do something to keep her, you know. Not just throw her out the door, you know. I just, I don't think that's the answer. Okay. You know, to just throw them out. Now, if it's abuse, abuse, yes. They need to be gone. But in this scenario, no. I I don't think she should have been just let go. You know, Tina, you make a a couple of really good points. I want to touch on the most important one first. Um, In the post-acute and long-term care setting, we have a significant challenge with turnover. Um, Part of that is a function of being able to hire people in. And the other part of that is a function of being able to keep the good quality people. And, and so, Tina, when you said, if I was in charge, I'd have given, I would have looked at some other alternatives. As leaders in long-term care, whether you're the certified nursing assistant, the lead CNA in the hall, or whether you're the executive director, I really encourage you to look at how you can achieve good order and discipline, in other words, how you can honor the resident's rights and desires and and wants, and how you can retain good quality caregivers, realizing that we all occasionally will make mistakes and we just need an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. So you said that and I really appreciated hearing that. The other thing you said that I really appreciated hearing you say was that There are times when we are given a challenge um, from the the men and women that we care for um, that we don't necessarily always know how to handle. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm glad that you acknowledge that because one of the things I would encourage our viewers to do is if you're confronted with a situation, you're just not quite sure how to handle it. Um, uh, I used to be in the army and we had this saying, when in doubt, whip it out. And we were talking about salutes. Well, in this particular case, what I'm talking about is when in doubt, ask a senior nursing assistant, ask somebody who's got experience and they will help guide you in the right direction. Now, Tina, I just wanted to ask you one kind of question as we kind of wrap up our time today. If you were going to give advice to nursing assistants about how to speak up for their residents, what would that advice be? Um, I'm not real sure about that one. They, there's a lot of things, you know. I mean, um, you know, there, there's so much there. I'm not really sure how to pinpoint that, but... The basic thing is making sure you know that their their rights and what they they want and what how they want to be taken care of and um you know what they like what they dislike what you know not every person is the same they they're all different personalities you know you you can have one that's as nice as can be and then one that'll beat the crap out of you so <laughs> you know I just think you know you just need to make sure you know your resident. And if you're not sure, come and get somebody else that mm-hmm. does know them and that can walk in there and show you, you know, hey, this is how you do it. This, this is how, what he likes or this is what she likes or anything to calm them down. So because when there's a new resident and there's a new CNA, it's kind of hard mm-hmm. because they don't know them. You know, if you've been there for years, they pretty much know you, you know, but if you get a new one in. I don't know them people. They're like, well, who's a stranger in my room, you know? And I want her out, you know? <laughs> but just go get somebody else that maybe is more familiar with them. Just keep trying. They'll get used to you. You, di- you just have to keep doing it. But not enough to agitate them to where they get mad. Because then you've got another problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it, there's a lot of things that I could give them advice about on that. 
but I don't have that long in the show. <laughs> <laughs> but the main thing is you have to know your resident and know what they like and know what they want um, and know how they want to be cared for or how they was cared for at home. They're coming into a strange place they, they don't know nothing about. You know, you're taking them out of your home and they, they don't have any idea where they're at. You know, so they're scared. And you just, five minutes out of your time, sit down and talk to them. Just reassure them you're there to take care of them. You're there to help them, you know, so they can get back home or if they stay with you long term. You know, you, you, they know that they can rely on you. That's one of the main things, I think, that they know who, who will take care of them. You know, um, Tina, a couple of things that you said there tie in perfectly with um, the information that we've covered in the grassroots advocacy um, in this entire series. And one of that, one of those pieces is this. It's important for us as we're speaking up for, for our residents, for our elders, uh, for our residents, for our fellow nursing assistants, or for our profession, it's very important for us to be knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You know, take the time to get to know the people that you're caring for, their needs, their wants, their desires. Check out their care plan. Check out their social history. Get to know them so that you're better able to serve them. Um, so that was really a great piece of advice, Tina, because um, I, I would imagine that there are a number of things that come up um, where if the, if the nursing assistant had known that person, they would have done things in a slightly a different, different way. way and gotten a different result. Mm -hmm. Tina, I'm really thankful that you shared your time with me today. And I thank you for being a CNA. And I thank you for serving on the Board of Directors for the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. You're welcome.